Next up, we're going to have Doug Bryant, uh, for, uh, who's the president and uh, CEO of Quidel. Quidel is one of the manufacturers of some of these diagnoses. He's going to tell us a little bit about some of the work that his company does. Uh, he also comes uh, with a background in Abbott, and so our last speaker will be from Abbott. So I think you're also finding that this is actually a relatively small community of people that's been working on this together for quite a lot of time, and a lot of heroes in this in this world who migrate from, uh, they may be working in business, but uh, as you'll see from them, they're also working a lot of things that are very important for global and public health. Thanks for coming, uh, everyone, and for your, uh, your interest. Following these two is a bit uh, humbling, I have to uh, admit. Um, I've been the CEO of Quidel uh, since uh, 2009, but uh, the company itself has a very long history in developing uh, infectious disease diagnostic tests and uh, has been a leader in the point of care diagnostic uh, category for some time. The first 30 years of our uh, company's history uh, are uh, shown briefly here, um, but that history actually began back in uh, 1979. Uh, the first test we developed was actually for pregnancy, which is not uh, an infectious disease, of course. Um, <laughs> so you seem to want to debate that. <laughs> uh, but shortly thereafter, we developed a five-minute assay uh, for group A strep, and then some time passed before uh, we introduced the first of the uh, rapid flu tests that our uh, company is probably best known for. Uh, among a number of firsts, uh, we were the uh, first company to receive CLIA waiver for strep A, for H. pylori, uh, and influenza A and B. Uh, more recently, from 2009 onward, our development uh, has uh, actually accelerated and a lot has been accomplished. Um, but there are three uh, programs that should be highlighted. The first uh, is that in October 2009, we began the development of the world's first handheld disposable molecular device uh, called AmpliView, which combines isothermal amplification uh, of viral and bacterial targets with the the detection technology that's incorporated in traditional rapid point-of-care tests. We've developed so far uh, assays uh, for C. difficile, group B strep, and HSV, herpes simplex virus, viruses 1 and 2, and currently have in development uh, assays for trichomonas pertussis and group A strep. Uh, second, in the fall of 2010, uh, we entered into a collaborative agreement with Northwestern University and the Northwestern Global Health Foundation uh, for the purpose of co-developing a low-cost, fully integrated uh, sample-to-answer molecular diagnostic system, uh, which would be rugged enough and inexpensive enough that it could be placed in limited resource settings like Africa, um, and uh, to do HIV viral load testing. Uh, which we uh, are also developing uh, the assay for. And uh, uh, by the way, we're also funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation for this project. Um, and finally, the third highlight uh, is the introduction of our next generation point of care immunoassay platform uh, called SOFIA. Uh, SOFIA is the next generation uh, immunoassay system, which is actually over here on display. Um, we developed SOFIA for a number of reasons. Uh, key among them was uh, objectivity. A lot of the assays that, that we were talking about a few minutes ago are visually read, not all, but some. Um, and objectivity uh, is certainly a, a help. Um, also, fail-safe measures which prevent operators in any setting uh, from making a mistake. In addition, the fluorescent detection uh, chemistry resident in uh, SOFIA um, is a factor that has enabled us to improve the limit of detection by about a hundredfold uh, in assays like uh, influenza. One of the key, uh, you won't be able to read that, but one of the key uh, features of SOFIA is its wireless connectivity and the potential for becoming a useful tool uh, in public health surveillance efforts. Uh, we're grateful to the CDC and uh, the University of Wisconsin 
for their help in demonstrating Sophia's ability to transmit de-identified test data from clinics uh, to public health settings, in this case, uh, the CDC. Uh, for those of you interested, I think we still have copies of the, this actual poster, uh, which was co-authored by, again, the CDC, uh, ourselves, and uh, the University of Wisconsin. There are many assays that we're contemplating or are in development for infectious disease. Uh, many of domestic and global public health concern uh, are being considered. The CDC and other public health agencies around the world publish reports on trends in infectious disease like influenza, uh, shown here. And many of us look at these informative and valuable data uh, every week. But as companies like our, ours, and, and there are uh, several other terrific diagnostic companies here in the room as well, as we develop better diagnostic tools like SOFIA, uh, and incorporate advancements in information technology, uh, imagine how powerful the collection of near real-time data would be. Thanks again for your attention. Thanks very much, Doug. Um, I, I, I was recalling, Beth and I were talking earlier about the old CDC days. They have a, actually, if any of you have been down to Atlanta, you should go visit the CDC. They, there are some amazing stuff there. There's a guy down in the basement who knows mosquitoes by name uh, and tests nets. He, apparently, he stayed up all night last night filming mosquitoes going into a Coleman net. Uh, very exciting stuff. Um, what's, what's, uh, it, it's a fascinating thing to sort of see this interconnection, and I, I mentioned, or he mentioned academics, and I think that's the other piece of this puzzle, which is we see government working with philanthropy, the Gates Foundation, but there are certainly others been involved working with private industry, but also ac uh, academics are often very much involved in this, in this train. So uh, this is really kind of partnership at its best, uh, and it's really a, a great example.